Hey guys, it's Bishop Sozzi here, and welcome to episode 70 of my New York City Wrestling Series for TEW 2016. So this is Gang Wars 6. Yep, I'm pretty sure it's 6. And uh, we've got an interesting show tonight. Um, there's a few things we'll go over. Um, I have changed the... Well, I've created alter egos for two of our wrestlers, um, just to give them... I mean, the names are, are kind of gimmicky, but they sort of play into their characters. I, I want to say play into their characters, um, but it has a lot to do with the uh, the pictures they're given um, and their finishes and their, you know, the actual names. So it, they kind of play in well, I think, anyway. Um, but we'll get into the show here. Start off with a match. Matty Faith beating Crimson Ghost which gets a 70 C+. Plus. In a decent match, Matty Faith defeated Crimson Ghost in 10-17 by pinfall with a leap of faith. Uh, this is just a, a work the crowd match. Matty Faith is improving in performance skills, so that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, not too bad, 70 C+. Plus. Uh, we then go into a 50 D+. Plus. Angel of Death cuts a backstage promo. So, this was... I've, forgotten his name, um, Poria, I forget his first name, I think it was Darrell, Darrell, yeah, something like that, um, but we've called him Angel of Death, I mean, his face paint kind of looks dark and mysterious, and I think his finisher is the Angel Side Slam, so I figured Angel of Death, I was going to do Angel of Darkness, but then I, I sort of thought... Yeah, well, we've already had the Ministry of Darkness tag team, so Angel of Death kind of... It just worked. It just worked a lot better. So, not a bad Menace promo. I think he's only got 66 C plus for his Menace, so he's not going to be pulling awesome ratings for a while uh, anyway, but still, 50 D plus is not too bad. Uh, we then go into a match, and his alter ego... Not his alter ego, but his, uh, his nemesis is the Pulverizer. Of course, that was... Uh, I think his, his last name was Pulver. So, it, it again, played into it quite well. Um, yeah, I like the name, the Pulverizer. It works quite nicely. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you their profiles uh, once we actually uh, end the show. But yeah, 74 B minus, pretty solid rating in a good match. The Pulverizer and Emmanuel Bryant defeated Angel of Death and Seth Whitehead in 828 when Emmanuel Bryant defeated Seth Whitehead by pinfall with a green chalk. And uh, the Pulverizer was the weak link. Okay. We then go into an 82 B. Charges Siaki cuts a menace promo before the. There's a big six way match coming up next for the Tri State Regional title. Which gets an 84 B plus, not too bad. Uh, so yeah, in an exceptional match, Charger Siaki defeated Logan Wolfsbane, Xavi Ferreira, Savage Tiger Jr., Brett London, and Fro Shaw in 20 minutes 23 seconds. When Charger Siaki defeated Xavi Ferreira by pinfall with a crash test, Charger Siaki wins the NYCW Tri-State Regional Title. So yeah, Froshaw was head and shoulders above everybody else in in ring, or in terms of in ring work, as you would kind of expect. He got a 92, so he definitely carried this match. Um, and yeah, Froshaw is now a main eventer. So yeah, he's uh, he's really good. He's uh, really good. Um, he, he, I mean, the Tri-State Regional Title is a mid card title, and once they get to main event, I kind of just want to take it off them straight away. Because they personally feel that they've outgrown the title as well. So it just works. It worked better. Let's take it off him. I mean, pretty much everyone else everyone else in this match is actually a mid-carder. So that's kind of kind of good. And it's kind of exactly where you want the title to be. Uh, Charger Siaki, he's... You know, we've done a little bit of work on him. He is a mid-carder. Might be up a mid-card fairly soon. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, he's won the title. Uh, we've got some worker improvements. Charger Siaki in technical and Brett London in rumble. Good stuff. We then go into an 86 B plus promo for the Southern Stars, of course. And animals rated on Menace and Tennessee on Entertainment here. So a pretty good promo there. They don't 
These two guys, they're a good tag team, but I don't really give them much much time, to be honest. Even on the Monday Night Main Event shows, they don't really feature all that often. But they do have a match tonight, and it gets a 75 B-, minus, which is pretty good, considering that both of the guys they're versing are en enhancement talents. So, pretty solid, pretty solid. In about, they had good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. The Southern Stars defeated Youthful Aggression in 754, when Animal Harker defeated Tautoa Roberts by pinfall with a Texas Meat Grinder. In terms of entering work, Tennessee Williams, Tennessee William, was head and shoulders above everybody else. So yeah, Hammer Hadley, uh, he returned from his MMA fight. He actually won it, which is pretty cool. Um, and I put these two in a tag team together, just a, sort of like a job job a heel tag team, and they had excellent chemistry when teaming together. And I thought Youthful Aggression, that's a that's a perfect tag team name for these two. Uh, Hammer's 22, and Tautoa is 20, so yeah, works perfectly, they're our only heel tag team as well, which kind of sucks, but that's really good to see, worker improvements, Hammer Hadley in performance, and Tautoa Roberts in performance as well, so good stuff, exactly what we want, we then go to a 69C+, plus. Graham Gorman cutting a menace promo, uh, which is pretty much the only stat that he really has to get himself over with, apart from his awesome wrestling ability, um, he's probably one of the best performers we actually have in the ring. So, yeah. 69C plus is pretty good. And he gets a 69C plus for the match as well. And about that, had good heat and decent wrestling. Graham Gorman defeated Warpiece in 931 by pinfall with a Gorman aghast. Not too bad. Okay, moving on. To an 88B plus. Uh, this is a six-man generic promo between Marsh Stranger Bret Heartbreak and the Midnight Prowler. Um, they're involved in the Gang Wars match tonight, of course. So an 88B+, plus, one off, an A. Not too bad. The match itself gets an 83B+. Plus. In an exceptional match, Akima Brave and the Ring Generals defeated Bret Heartbreak, Marsh Stranger, and the Midnight Prowler in 24-39, when Akima Brave defeated Bret Heartbreak by pinfall with a Samoan suplex. And Bret Heartbreak is improving in technical skills. Good stuff. Moving on. To a 100 A-star menace promo. Bear Bukowski cutting a menace promo on Ross Henry, saying that there's no chance in the world that he will be taking the title off him tonight in the main event. Which gets an 83B+. I kind of knew that this was going to happen. Um, I kind of had a bad feeling when I was booking this match. 83B+, is still pretty good. Um, but as far as, you know, the Empire title goes, I pretty much expect A's from these matches. Like I said, I did expect a little bit lower. I thought maybe 85 to 87, somewhere in that, that sort of area. So it's a little bit lower than I expected. Uh, but that's all good. In an exceptional match, Bear Bukowski defeated Ross Henry in 20 minutes and 1 second by submission with a bear trap after blatantly cheating. Bear Bukowski makes defense number one of his NYCW Empire title. So, the match would have been much better, but uh, of course there was a lack of selling uh, between the two. I mean, that's pretty fair. Ross is quite terrible at selling, and Bear's, he's not great, but he's hes acceptable against someone, that, someone else that can sell, if that makes sense. And uh, a lack of psychology. Uh, I think Ross... Because I put slow build on it, Ross has only got a C psychology and Bear's got a B minus, so yeah. But they both got 92 entering performances, which is really good. Really, really good, so yeah, I don't know. Let's end the show. Okay, okay. 86B plus, that's pretty good. Not too bad. I mean, it's n nothing amazing, but it's not too bad at the same time. Okay, so who deserves some praise? I think we'll, we will have to go Ross Henry because he's really upset uh, about taking the loss. We'll have to go Froshaw, but I'd probably go Froshaw anyway uh, simply because he was by far the best in that match and they got an 84B+, plus, uh, which was the best match on the actual card as well, which is awesome. Uh, anyone else that really deserves some good praise? 
Um, someone else was upset. Who was it? Was there anyone else that was upset? I can't remember. No, I honestly can't remember. I think we'll go Angel of Death. He was he was pretty good in his match. Not too bad. He also had a a half decent promo, I suppose. So pleased, very happy, and pleased. Cool. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, it wasn't a great show, but then again, I'm not too fussed about it. I mean, there is another thing I have to mention, um, which I definitely called in the last episode. Uh, we did lose El Serpiente, uh, South of the Border. Um, after I did one Monday night main event show, and South of the Border then put an offer in for a written contract for him. I mean, I pretty much knew that it was going to happen, because... Uh, oh, God damn it. Oh, the Pulverizer, no. Matty Faith and Animal Harker. God damn it, Prowler. If we weren't losing stars left and right, I would fucking fire you. That's so annoying seeing that. It really is. I mean, it's my own fault because I put them in a in a program and a match together, so... Ugh, frustration. Ugh, okay, let's have a look at the uh, the roster here before I lose my cool. Um, although I already have. So yeah, Daryl... Or Daryl... Daryl Poirier. Yeah, as you can see, Angel Side Slam is his finisher. So, Angel of Death, it, it really works. I, I quite like it, to be honest. Um, he's actually improving quite a lot because Jack DeCult is his mentor. So, yeah, he's got 92 basics now. B minus psychology. His brawling is still going up, which is crazy. And, uh, yeah, selling's also going up quite a lot, as well as his stamina. That's gone up a lot. I'm pretty sure that's gone up heaps uh, since we... Oh, maybe not. Never mind. I might be wrong. I am definitely wrong. Anyway, yeah, so there's the an well, Angel of Death. It's not the Angel of Death, but I'll probably be calling him that quite a lot anyway. Uh, the other one is, of course, the Pulverizer. Yep. <laughs> okay, so his name was Shadrach Pulver, the Pulverizer. It just makes sense. It really does. Um, he looks like a, a badass as well. Kind of like the Punisher, if you've ever seen that movie, or the, the comic. Um, very similar to that. I mean, I just see the, f the face paint, and it just... I don't know, it just brings me back to that. Um, he's also very good in the ring. Well, not in the ring, but really good performance and physical abilities. And, of course, he's got that menace, which is awesome. So, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. And now he's got a simmering tension with Bret Heartbreak, which fucking sucks. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty good. Happy with that. Happy with the names as well. I really like the names. Uh, the other thing to mention was the tag team, Youthful Aggression. Uh, their finisher. I decided to, just to make up a random move. It's called the Hammer Spike Powerbomb. I mean, yeah. Make, make whatever you... You will about that that being a finishing finishing move. The way I see it, I don't know. I was thinking like a power bomb, and as the as Hammer Hadley's power bombing them, then we can have Tao Toa do a neck breaker at the same time as he's bringing him down. I don't know. It just it, that's what I thought of in my head, and it just I feel like it works. Uh, we are now 34 importance in the New England area. Um, but we're still 60 importance and 62 popularity in the tri-state region. Uh, apart from that, don't really think there's anything else to go over, really. Um, yeah, there's nothing else really to go over. Uh, the creative meeting, I suppose. Froshaw is up at number two now, which is massive. As you can see, he's real good. He is uh, really, really good. But the thing is, I don't want to lose him. I'm scared. 
Froshaw is awesome. I really don't want to lose him. Please. <laughs> Please. Um, apart from that, it's pretty much all the same. I don't really think anything's changed. Raven Nightfall's there. That's interesting. How good is Raven? She's pretty good, I remember. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I wish she was an actual wrestler. So I would definitely base a whole women's division about, around her. And I'd do it right now as well. Uh, but she's still managing... Uh, what's his name? The Midnight Prowler. Um, I, I really want to fire him. I really do. I want to get rid of him. He is quite good in the ring though. So that's the only thing that is like, keeping him around. I should just get rid of him. I really should. I might do it off camera. I'm not sure. He just pisses me off. He started all this drama with Bret Heartbreak, and it's just... Uh, it's just developed into this massive grind for me, to be honest. Okay, so they're the who's not. I mean, another thing to mention, Solomon Gold uh, is the protege of Akima Brave. I might have actually told you guys that in the previous episode, but Warpiece is now also the protege of Akima. So that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, he's already got three protégés. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's... I mean, it hasn't actually done anything yet, but that's okay. Uh, actually, another thing to mention, the unexpected, sorry. This is a, an, another new tag team that I've found out has really great chemistry together, and it's Akima Brave and Brett London, so uh, protege and mentor. So that's pretty cool as well. And I'm just, call, just calling them the unexpected because, you know, you see these two guys, you wouldn't really expect them to be a tag team, so it's unexpected. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. That's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you're a new viewer. And apart from that, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.